Peace. What is up, everybody? I am Oneno, and thank you for tuning in to this video. Once again, I hope you're having a great day. I just wanted to make a video on the topic of empathy. It seems like I started noticing back in December that there's been a lot of chatter online about empathy. And what I mean by chatter online is that there's actual articles that are being written, one by even the Los Angeles Times, that talks about empathy. And it seems now for the past two months or so, empathy has been a hot subject and it's being painted in a really negative light, in my opinion, which is why I'm making this video, because I believe that empathy is a very positive human trait and it's one that should be cherished and one that should be expanded for sure. Um, so the first article that I came across that kind of piqued my interest on the subject of empathy was written by The Verge and um, a writer named Angela Chen. And the title here, I'll put a link uh, in the bio to this article, is Paul Bloom on Why VR Empathy Projects Won't Save the World. And basically this article goes on to talk about how VR is being used um, in some politically charged ways to show you things like um, I think the article in here is talking about how there was uh, some research group that basically made a VR experience of what it's like to be on a farm where animals are being killed for food. And basically it's an empathy project to spread awareness for what's happening in farms and with animals and what's actually happening for us to get our meat on our table at our house. And as soon as people are exposed to this stuff, it becomes very hard to turn a blind eye, you might say, because you've had a direct experience in virtual reality with the real situation, seeing what actually happens with the animals. Let me read a little, um, a little bit of what uh, Angela Chen is saying. She says, I spoke to Bloom about living in an age of emotion, the dangers of following our hearts and how technology can use empathy to exploit us. Um, she goes on to say, empathy is a really exciting area for people who are working in VR. There are a lot of projects that make you feel like you're somebody else or work really hard to evoke certain emotions. The, the idea is that our natural empathy is limited, so why not use technology to expand who we can have empathy for? Then technology isn't just innovative, it can cause important change. What's the downside? Empathy technology seems to be incredibly exciting, so I have nothing against that for pleasure. But if a lot of people want to use empathy technology as a tool of political advocacy, that's different. And then she goes on to talk more about how empathy is basically a cheap shot and it can be used for both good and evil. You can tap into people's empathy to um, manipulate them one way or the other. And she's saying not always for good. Now, in one sense, I completely agree with her because people do manipulate through empathy quite a bit. But in another sense, uh, she goes on to talk about this book. Um, I'm not even going to quote the book. I want to leave that unknown. You can find it in the article. There's a, this is like a 12 page article. I mean, the pages are small on my phone. Uh, but she goes on to say, so we have empathy versus reason. There are training workshop workshops for rationality and studies show that empathy can be trained too. In some ways, it's a choice and you can learn to make it include more people. Why not work on improving empathy instead of discarding it as a guide? Let me jump to the next article now. So that was back in December that I found that article. And now let's move forward to, okay, the globe and Mail. I don't know this publication, but on uh, December 23rd, 2016, they posted this article. And this article is written by Peter Singer. Um, or maybe it's featuring Peter Singer. It says it's written by Peter Singer. It says, Peter Singer is a professor of bioethics at Princeton University and laureate professor at the University of Melbourne. Now, um, Mr. Obama expressed, 
uh, expressed, expressed a widespread view, so the title of the new book, Against Empathy, by Yale University psychologist Paul Bloom comes as a shock. How can anyone be against something that enables us to put ourselves in others' shoes and feel what they feel? Uh, to answer that question, we might ask another question. Whom should we have empathy? Oh, for whom should we have empathy? As Donald Trump prepares to su succeed Mr. Obama, analysis are suggesting that Hillary Clinton's lost November uh, lost November's election because she lacked empathy with white Americans, particularly Rust Belt voters yearning for the days when the U.S. was a manufacturing powerhouse. The problem is that empathy for American workers is in tension with empathy workers in Mexico and China, um, who would be even worse off without jobs than their American counterparts. Empathy, empathy makes us kinder to people with whom we empathize. That's good, but it also has a darker side. And now they go on to make a whole nother article based on the dark side of empathy and how basically um, that they're using empathy in the wrong way. They're basically saying that um, Hillary Clinton lost the election because white males couldn't empathize with her. That is a, a reach and a, a gross use of what empathy actually is to explain how Hillary Clinton lost the election. Uh, the final article is written by the Los Angeles Times, a guy named Paul Bloom, and it was written on January 17th of 2017. And the article says, how important is empathy? we may overvalue it. Here's the actual article. And it says, does the ability to share the feelings of another person make us better human beings? Fans of empathy describe it as working like a spotlight, focusing us on specific individuals, driving us to feel as they do and making us care. This sounds good, but it has perils. Spotlights illuminate what they're pointed at, and since we find it natural to empathize with those close to us, decisions driven by empathy tend to be tribal. Spotlights have narrow focus, and so empathy is innumerate, favoring the one over the many, the specific over the statistical. It is because of empathy that we often care more about a baby stuck in a well than about a large-scale crisis such as climate change. Um, so, first of all, I have a big issue with this article making empathy uh, something that is tribal in the sense of like pre-civilization or prehistoric in that kind of a sense. Like it's for what people do in the jungle, not what people do in the real world. Well, people in the real world should have empathy. This is what keeps our society connected. And now it goes on in this article um, to describe what empathy is. It says, uh, evidence from a range of sources, from Buddhist theology to neuroscience studies, suggests a more complicated picture. Empathy, in the sense of feeling what we believe other people feel, can be meaningfully distinguished from caring about other people and loving them often called compassion, or in the Buddhist tradition, loving-kindness. Um, okay, now it goes on to make a distinction about how doctors and therapists should not empathize with their patients because otherwise they can get lost in their empathy and not be able to correctly help their patients, which I completely disagree with. If you can't empathize with your patients, how can you effectively help them? Okay, I'm, I need to actually cut it off here with the articles. If you want to read these articles in depth, I'll put all three links in the description down below. I would now like to take the rest of this time to redefine empathy. Empathy is not getting caught up in somebody else's feelings, though that is a part of empathy. That is not the only dynamic of empathy and it's not the starting place of empathy. The starting place of empathy is that I know how I will affect you or I know how I will make you feel by taking the actions that I am 
taking in whatever present moment. For instance, if I go to punch you in the face, I know through empathy that it will hurt your face for me to do so. Likewise, if I scratch my fingernails on a chalkboard, I know through empathy that it will make a displeasurable sound in your eardrums. It is basically my ability to know how my actions will affect you and the world around me. If I do not have that ability, I believe that is termed apathy. Apathy is where you don't care about your interaction with the world around you. Empathy is having a deep caring about how you interact with the world around you and also how the world interacts with you. And empathy is not a negative human trait. It's not something that we should brush aside and basically discredit from human beings. What makes us human is that we can empathize, that we can put ourselves into another person's perspective. Those that cannot put themselves into another person's perspective are called narcissists. And we are being ruled by narcissists right now. That should be obvious to you. Um, so, of course, our leaders are not going to be teaching us about the real definition of empathy. The people that are running the media and that are telling the global story right now, those people are not interested in teaching you how to empathize with one another because their whole agenda is based on dehumanizing the individual and building up the state. Well. The state it will always and forever be beneath the people, and that is just the way the power structure is going to be. So the way we maintain a healthy society is by actually empathizing with one another. And instead of defining empathy as you getting caught up and lost in the emotions of somebody else, let's remember the real definition of empathy, which is, I know how I will affect you when I take certain actions upon you. That is the real defini definition of empathy that I will offer you. That it is, an, it is a self-awareness, an awareness of how you are interacting with the game, with the world around you. How are, what are you creating and how are you spreading it? What are you propagating? And remember that those that are trying to dehumanize us, to dehumanize our brothers and sisters, they use all kinds of means like race, religion, socio-economic class. They use all of these labels to dehumanize us from one another. If, if we are having an issue with labeling, then we should stop labeling and come back and remember that we are all human beings on one planet. Outside of society, we we have all congregated into groups and we call these groups America and England and Australia and France and Germany. These are just groups, but we are all human beings. And even if we were to come together and say that there is one global community, well, yes, but it will never be political. There will always be one global community. There always has been one global community, but there will never be one political community because we are all all the people are above that political form of community we are intimately connected across the planet so anyways that's where i'm going to wrap up this video i just had to get this off of my chest because i really don't like watching the media consistently uh, degrading a very positive human trait and it is extremely valuable that we maintain our empathy for one another and with one another, for the animal life around us, for the plant life around us, for those that we haven't even met yet. Let us keep an open heart and remember that we are here to create a new world of peace and love and unity, and we want to share this world with each other. All right, that's where I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks for listening, guys. Until I see you again along the journey, please go to my website at iamoneno.com. You can find all of my blog posts are posted there. And um, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share the video if you like it. Give it a thumbs up. And until I see you again, oneness in sound, I am Oneno. <laughs>
Peace.